Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv, and today, well, I have an appropriate build for this time of year, and that is the Atlantis kit of Blackbeard. And this is uh, in the old Aurora box, which is really cool, you know, the old Aurora kit. Um, some of us real old guys <laughs> built <laughs> when, when we were lads. Um, I want to say it's one tenth scale, but it looks smaller than that, maybe one twelfth. And it says, yeah, it says one tenth right here. So, anyway, that's what it is. Uh, if you look at the back of the box here, other than the little scrape from <laughs> from me, but uh, kind of uh, how it's supposed to look, I think that's pretty neat that they put that there. And of course, the sides. And the sides, and the sides. So it's got a height of eight inches and a width of four and a half inches. There's 51 parts molded in gray and brown, and there's even some decals. So we're gonna take a look at this today. Uh, first off, I've got the destructions here that I've actually spilled a little bit of paint on. And You've got kind of building the body here, and it talks a little bit about Blackbeard's flag, which is really, really cool. Um, it says, designed to intimidate em enemies, enemies, enemies. <laughs> Blackbeard's flag pictured a skeleton spearing a heart while raising a toast to the devil. So that's what that is. This flag, uh, imaginary, is captured in this kit's nameplate. Imagery, imaginary, imagery. Yeah, on the nameplate. We'll take a look at that here in a, in a few minutes. But anyway, so if I wanted to actually recreate the flag, that might be kind of uh, fun to do as a uh, you know, background piece with this. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do when it's all finished. But you can see the parts of putting the body together and his weapons and such. And then the display stand, which is, I think the original kit had a, a smaller and a different stand. I can't remember what it was, um, but I've seen pictures of it. This is the, the latest incarnation of it, though, which is the actual like, helm of the ship, which I think is really, really cool. So we're going to get to building this. Um, we'll take a look at the parts breakdown real quick, and then we'll get uh, building this and show you what we're going to do. So here is a look at the parts breakdown and as you can see you've got there on the left side you've got the uh, two halves of the torso, you've got the two halves of the head, you've got left and right arm, inner and outer, you got the boots in two parts and the deck and the other cool parts for it. So we're going to go ahead and get this assembled and see how it goes. Okay, so he was a pretty quick and easy um, assembly. So wanted to just show you how the seams look on here. Again, I used that sprue glue all over because there was a few gaps. Whoa, there we go. As you can see, I'm gonna have to sand some of these seams down. Uh, but the gaps are taken care of. That uh, sprue glue works very, very well. But yeah, I have some sanding to do. There's a little bit more I've got to fill right there. And I've got to straighten that belt out. But you can see it's mostly just sanding. There's not, not much in the way of gaps, which is really good. So I'll go ahead and shoot him with the 2X primer that I use on just about everything these days. And I shoot the deck 
you know, everything. Um, it's now ready for whatever paints I'm going to use and you can see again the gaps turned out really good using that sprue glue and just a little bit of sanding so I was very very pleased with how all of that turned out. And here is the boot and this seam right here that uh, you can see where I've had to sand it but again there was no uh, there was no seam left over. We're going to see how that turns out when I get some paint on it. And here's the deck. I went ahead and put a uh, coat of just a brown craft paint on and I've got most of the pieces on here, not quite all of them, and obviously I've left the wheel off, so that's my base brown color. Now I'm not going to go through every step of painting with him, but I'll kind of go through the highlights of what I've done. So this is that AK Interactive uh, third generation paint that uh, we had a little tutorial on just recently. And I started out with the base flesh because I wanted a nice ruddy look to his face. And I would painted the whole thing with that. Um, I started to do some highlights with the first round of highlight and I mixed some of that in with the base to get mm, just the right color that I wanted for the most part of his face. You'll notice around the eyes though the base color it's it's much darker. You'll notice some of the areas in the folds of his skin that base color it's a lot darker and then under the uh, uh, or above the eyelids and under the eyelid as well. For his hair I didn't know what to do so I just went ahead and painted it black and went ahead and highlighted it with kind of a um, uh, just kind of a, a neutral gray look dry brushed to try and get those those highlights so and I did try to give him kind of a hazel look to his uh, iris on his eyes so I did paint the iris on the eyes can't really see in these pictures though now some of the details I went and did I went ahead and painted his uh, fingernails uh, black and you can see the two different tonal variations on the hands and how they turned out. I think they turned out very well using those AK paints. I just painted the guns uh, with a nice dark brown. Now his jacket is a custom mix of kind of a ruby red and a uh, purple by testers. It is actually um, designed for cars, but I kind of custom mixed this up to get this um, maroon colored jacket. Now his pants, I painted with a Floquil railroad color, uh, it's called mud. I dull coated all of this. You can see some of the details I did though. Really fine black um, brush. I went ahead along the edge of the coat, I went around the belt buckle and some of those areas to really try and make the clothes pop out. Um, you can see also where I've used just a slightly darker color on some of the folds to try and uh, you know get the shadows in. We've got the brass buttons here. I went ahead and painted the uh, most of the sword um, handle and whatnot with the uh, uh, brass color and just kind of a steel color for the sword itself. I didn't want anything bright and flashy. So here's kind of the overall look of how things are on, on him. Uh, I went ahead and used a couple of different, like three different uh, tones of that same brown, just a little bit of red or a little bit of white added to it and then I went ahead and gave it all a wash with Larry's bath water and went over with a lighter kind of a gray color to uh, pick up all the highlights and you can see that here on the um, on the anvil and some of these other areas so some of these things that are laying on the ground I went ahead and painted like the uh, bandana red with the white uh, you can see the wheel here is just the brown with a little bit of a lighter same brown with a little bit of white in it um, added this I used a very dark brown and then dry brushed a lot on this. Uh, the straps are actually black and then I went over them and dry brushed them with just a hint of a silver to give them that metallic look. And here's the overall appearance of him. Not too bad. I really like the deck and the way it turned out, kind of that darker 
um, rich reddish brown color and here it is with the name plate on it. The only thing I don't like is that green which is supposed to be a bottle and I just didn't have a good green that uh, would look like a, a clear broken bottle. So, Well here he is going to spin around a bit for us and uh, hopefully you can get a little bit better look. Thanks for joining us today folks. I hope you liked this build and I highly recommend it. This is a great little kit.